How much is tuition? $45,000. And you guys couldn't even get into your own convocation? No, they would not let us in. Wow. What's your name? overcrowded. My name's Raham. Raham, thank you very much for talking to us. So, you see that, that the problem is not just who is speaking, because that absolutely is the problem. And the history of the FBI with the black community. That is the problem. But we're also talking about students who pay tuition, bought, being barred from their own convocation. And that also is a huge problem. So, let's see what else is going on behind us. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
We're sick and tired. We're sick and tired. We're being sick and tired. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they want to bring this man, this man on our campus. This man who created the Ferguson effect, saying that recording viral police video somehow contributes to depolicing. This is the man who is calling us to truth and service. This is who we've allowed into our space. This is who is speaking on our stage while we are outside. It's 2017, y'all. I didn't see any whites, whites only signs outside, so I don't really understand why we're out here. Not today. It's 2017, and we have a white man who is the head of the FBI killing black and brown people around the world, not just here, around the world. And he has a stage. He has a platform. He has a voice that our president is listening to and values more than ours. Why are we out here? Why is our president in there? Why is our president not out here listening to his students? Because of our concern. Why am I scared? Why was I hassled by the police trying to get in? I was put to see on my street. They literally pushed me out of the room with their hands. Campus police, not DC police. These are the police that are on our campus every day. Every day. And they are protecting the ex-FBI director. No, bro, you have to go. You can't go, actually. You can't go, actually. This is a black space right now. This isn't about media. This isn't about media. This is for us. This is for Howard students. This is for Howard students. So if you are a Howard student, you are welcome in this space. If you are not, you can look, but you are not the purpose of this event. This is to memorialize the right. people who That's have right. died. That's the right. People who were murdered. Murdered. Michael Brown in the street for four hours. Sandra Bland killed in police custody for doing nothing. We are here to reclaim our space. To reclaim our historic land. Yeah. 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 And if you ain't down with that, then you don't need to be here. No, just call me. Fuck y'all. 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 Fuck y'all.
So, um, it, it's amazing to see this new generation of black activists already picking up the mantle. This is how we know that the spirit of resistance in the black community has never died. Because no matter where we are, when we see injustice against us, we rise up. And that's why Lupin Nation exists, to tell you the stories. Yeah, Howard University Television is here. I think maybe NBC4 is here. But unless you live in the Washington, D.C. area, you have no idea that this happened. Those of you in Lukman Nation who are in other states, who are in other countries, you don't know the, the ideological struggle that's going on on the campuses of historically black colleges and universities like Howard University today, where our students are being indoctrinated by people who were the former top law enforcement officers who set the policy and the tone, who set the tone for how black people in black communities and black organizations were treated by law enforcement. And that man was invited here by the president of this university. Uh, uh, speak about um, just now how some of the mainstream media was just now violating the space of the Howard students. I mean, this arrogance of just violating space. I understand that, that we want to get the story, right? But this is a sacred space. And as much as we want to be here and support our brothers and sisters, our young brothers and sisters here at Howard University, we're not all students of Howard. So we're not going to invade their space. They have the right to their space. They have the right to their space. We're here to show you what they're doing on their campus, in their community, to protect their rights and, and, and their space that they're paying tuition for, by the way. But they can't even get into their own complications. But you've got members of the mainstream media who are so pressed to get a story that they're invading the space of these students who are advocating for their rights. And yeah, because that, because um, nothing is as, as good for ratings like angry black folks, right? Right, right. Yeah, they show up for that. They show up for that. And I think it, it, it's important that, that the young lady, uh, one of the uh, activists, made that a lot of the people who were let in, aside from the students who got here early, earlier before the, the activists did, a lot of the people who were let in were all white people who came with James Cole. They were protected. But these students couldn't get into their own convocation, and they pay $45,000 a year to this university. That, that's a crime. That's a crime. And for those of you who are not in D.C., in the D Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, you need to know that this is, this is another level that we fight on. It's not just in the streets against brutal and, and murderous police officers. It's not just employment discrimination. It's not just health care discrimination. This is going on on our college campus. But we are not standing up for our next generation of activists. We ain't having it. That's what you're seeing today. And as we were talking, this protest got bigger. Uh, talk about, um, if you can, you notice that a lot of it has been mentioning about the police. Yeah. Once again, so you talk about Howard University, uh -huh. uh, you're talking about, um, um, you know, kids who are really like the cream of the crop. Right. You know, doing right. everything that America tells them that exactly. they should do. And, and still, you, you hear this narrative of, of having problems with the police. Right. I mean, here it is, we're, we're told, get a college education, and then you can succeed in America. So these kids have done it. They've done that, and they're still mistreated by police on their own campus. Mm. You know, because even though most of the police on their own campus are also black, and it was interesting to see uh, campus police and metropolitan police locking the doors, barring the doors of Crampton Auditorium to keep these black kids out of their own uh, uh, convocation while they were protecting the white former 
director of the FBI fought them. And, and they were protecting him from their free speech expression. Right. You know, this is their campus. They pay to maintain this campus. Their tuition pays the salary of the president and 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 the professor and the police and, and the campus police. So it's that disconnect that our brothers and sisters in law enforcement have when when these kids are asking the question, "Who do you serve? Who do you protect?" It's like they they don't they, they don't think these are the people who pay my salary. I'm supposed to be serving and protecting them. Let me open the doors and let these kids go into their convocation and have their say. But instead, instead, they follow the orders of those in authority. And because black descent is always perceived as dangerous, as dangerous and as a threat. You know, black you know, folks that's not the black folks that's just not accepting what's done to them is, is a problem. Right. Right. And it's interesting. So, so turn turn around, hon, and look at the this. Uh, so we see looks like a, uh, it looks like uh, I'm not sure. Like I said, we're not students of Howard University. This looks like a court of some kind, uh, uh, some kind of I don't know pageant or contest. But it's an interesting juxtaposition where we have all of these students over here protesting against. Former FBI Director James Comey coming to give the opening convocation speech at, HB, at an HBCU. And then we've got these young black students who, you know, they're just going about their window dressing as usual, business as usual. You know, it, no, nothing stops. They want to stick to the script of, you know, this is what we're comfortable with. They're holding up the status quo of whatever pageant, I mean, whatever, you know, whatever contest, whatever court they are, when their fellow brothers and sisters are out here fighting for, uh, fighting against the indoctrination of the students of this school. Yeah, I actually heard one student say that this whole protest was stupid. Yeah, I mean, so so it's not like you have every student on campus that's down with this protest. There are a lot of students. There were students who came out of the convocations. Most of the students that you see in the suits, in the uh, in the black and blue business suits, they were attendees of the convocation. Um, so just like in the larger black community, we, we all are not on the same page as far as these issues are concerned. So within our community, we've got a lot of work to do to explain to people why this man coming to speak at this university was so problematic and why the president inviting him here was really disrespectful to the students, the black students at this university because of the policies of the FBI. But again, we can't think that all black people are monolithic. We're not. So of course we got black people who are supportive. We got black people who are like, oh, it's his First Amendment right. And, but with your First Amendment rights, you have to be confronted with the truth. And part of the truth is not being told in there, is being told out here. And that that is why we have to bring bring you these kinds of stories. And and this part of the truth is honestly what a lot of establishment black black folks don't want to admit. Because see, they're profiting from it. Too. They're, they're profiting from believe me, the president of the university is, is is trying to cash in on his relationship that he's trying to forge with people like James Comey. It, this isn't this wasn't done in the in the in the interest of free speech. It there definitely were, wasn't done in the interest of the kids because the kids don't want it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there were better people he could have invited to speak at these kids' opening convocation. There were more illustrious people. There were more honorable people to tell you uh, to be honest. Why him? Because he represents a power structure that some people, even in the black community, who are just as tied to the establishment as other folks, want to be able to capitalize on. And, and the, the, the needs and the interests and the, the truth that these students are trying to uh, um, amplify out here doesn't matter as much as the paycheck that some of these people will get from having people like James Comey come here and speak. So. Thank you, Samuel. Okay. Hey, check on our equipment. Okay. Well, I'm going to go on. We're, we're going we're gonna to scoot on back over here to our little base. <laughs> and it's interesting. 
as we were talking, you know, people were walking by and and agreeing and you know giving the snaps and which is you know in in the in the beat circles, I guess that's what they call them now. Uh, giving the snaps for uh, affirmation, and then it, some people disagreed too, and that and that's fine. But the issue is the most important issue for us is that these students were not allowed to attend their own convocation because the administration wanted to protect James Comey and his guests and shut these students who pay tuition out. And that, in our estimation, is wrong. James Comey is a big boy. He should have been able to uh, deal with some uh, protesters <laughs> while he was giving his speech. But he's far too interested in indoctrinating another generation of, of young people to, to allow that kind of dissent in, in a space that was ceded to him that really belongs to these students out here. Just heard that they uh, something about respectability politics. Yeah, because one of the chants, <laughs> one of the one of the things one of the students were chanting was "fuck James James Comey, fuck James Comey, fuck James Comey." And you know there were a couple of students who were like, "Oh no, no, don't say." And, and one of the activists said, "Y'all, we are not out here on some respectability politics bullshit." That we we just talked about this last night, and and, and in our in our last show and the show before how. Even black people feel like our expressions of dissent are not valid unless we're polite. And we're talking about these kids having the knowledge of FBI policies that have killed black and brown activists, some of those activists who came from this university. And, and, and people still want them to be polite. Oh, don't make the white people upset. Don't curse because you don't want people to think that you don't have any home training. The people who are killing us have no home training. And these kids know that. The truth is not here. I mean, you can't fool these kids anymore. So what they're not going to do is stand here and, and try to convince someone to agree or to see their humanity by being nice. So that was a very interesting thing to, to have just occurred. I don't know if you guys got, got a gist of that. So what love the young man was talking about? He was talking about uh, how our university was uh, built not just as a mecca for education for black people, but it was also part of that whole, remember how we talked about uplift slogan and, and, and assimilationism, how, how, you know, this was supposed to be a place where, where black people learned how to fit into the paradigm of white society, right? This, this was, this was for, for middle class black people at the turn of the century where black people with means could send their students to learn how to fit into white society. But during the late 60s and, and early 70s, there was a different mood as the end of the civil rights era came and then a more quote unquote radical era of activism um, that, that came out of the cities 
uh, emerged when a lot of those activists came from our university and other HBCUs as well as, as well as other mainstream universities. Some of the people who are icons in the Black Power movement were college-educated Black people with degrees like uh, uh, like Angela Davis and Huey Newton. Um, and, and, and Fred, uh, uh, and, and yeah, and who we knew. Uh, it looks like there's a uh, march somewhere. I don't know. Uh, so, so the the idea was that they're reclaiming their space as not uh, a place where black people learn how to fit into white society, but that black people that black people advocate for themselves. That um, we're still talking about, man, respecting our lives. You know, yeah. like you know, that, that Black Lives Matter hashtag, man, means more. Than what people think it is. Yeah, it's it's not. Oops. We're not just. It's not just. Uh, you know, an issue of uh, police violence. Like we say, it's also uh, issues in education, discrimination in education. It's also discrimination in in healthcare. So it's also discrimination in healthcare. It's also discrimination in housing. It's also discrimination in in uh, finance, in housing, in employment. <coughs> Black life on every level is devalued in this country, and these students know this. They know it because they live it, and they know it because when they come to what is supposed to be um, a, a, a sacred space for young black life, young black college life to grow and bloom, they experience it here too from their own administration. And let's, and let's talk about sacred because what they, when they started off the protest, mm -hmm. they did um, an African ritual called libations. Yes, yes, they did. We, we talked about, talked last night about how nobody's been assimilated in this country more than black people have because we don't even have our original names. You know, unless we changed our name to something else, our names came from the people who owned us. That's almost every black person in this country. So our traditions, we had to learn our traditions from research that we weren't allowed to keep them. So it's heartening that these young students uh, start their activism, their active activism with, with a, a, a ceremony that marks a space as sacred, that comes from a culture that was forcibly stripped from us, beaten out of us, uh, indoctrinated out of us. And, and, and nobody's been more assimilated than us. But these students are standing up, not just against James Comey, but they're standing up against the centuries of assimilation that we've been forced to accept as the norm to be accepted in American society. And I, I want to show something. If you want to talk about black spaces, mm -hmm. what is common um, with black spaces? Uh, police occupation. There you go. Police surveillance. <laughs> mm -hmm. You never get black spaces without always being under surveillance. And, always. you know, we talk about that um, historic, you know, the, the historical context of it, mm -hmm. about how there could never have, there could never be um, black uh, mm -hmm. assemblage mm -hmm. without um, someone uh, surveilling and um, making sure that, you know, what those color folks up to. Right. right you know, right. so they always have, they always have to be someone who represents the state mm -hmm. or the rich elite. Right. Or the aristocracy, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. someone has to represent their interest there, mm -hmm. even if it's just observing. Right. So that you know, so that they, you know, they're, and which is which is what they're doing. Now I know some people are like, well, they're camp campus police. They're supposed to be keeping keeping the students safe. Let me ask you this: If this were an Ivy League university and this was a fraternity rush event, you think there'd be a bunch of cops standing around? If this were a white fraternity having an event on the quad, hell no. But because these are black students protesting, advocating for their rights, then they're, they're perceived to be a threat. Right. And, and, and <laughs> for, for students who have paid $45,000 in tuition, I think they have a right to speak without police presence and surveillance. That's ridiculous. And and you don't you wouldn't know this if we weren't here. This is the, I, I, I'm getting angry because I realize that if we wouldn't be here today, we wouldn't have known how ridiculous this is to have campus police out here 
surveilling these kids, watching over these kids while they stand out here and express themselves and chant. And, and, and they're armed you know, now. They're armed. And, and unarmed on no, their campus. Yeah, they're armed. They pay tuition to keep Right. Up. Unarmed, but the police are armed. You know, knowing full well that, that if we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be, if we weren't here, we wouldn't know that, that this is the situation. And if we weren't here to show you, you wouldn't know. And let's also ask the question, um, because there's a number of cameras out here today. Right. Um, is that uh, keeping, uh, what, 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 what could have been different if no camera showed up at all? That's could always the question, isn't right. it? That's, that's always the question. And you know, look, <laughs> security needs to do its job. At the same time, I can't help but wonder if this were uh, a fraternity step show out here on the quad. If, if there would be these cops out here watching the step show. No, they wouldn't. But as long as black people are doing things that are seen as acceptable by the establishment, as long as we're, you know, walking down the sidewalk in our, in our uh, pageant um, uh, 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 formation with our sashes and ribbons on, and, and playing the role of the compliant, you know, black student. Yeah, then, the, yeah, the minstrel you know, show. We're not a threat. Yeah, the minstrel we're show. We're not a threat. But as soon as we start exhibiting okay. independent thought that is out, not only outside of the establishment, but that's in direct opposition. That that white that, that white people didn't approve. That wasn't approved by white people. <laughs> right. Then we need surveillance by the cops. You know, and, I, and I'm not trying to demonize these guys. They're, they're doing their jobs. But I do appreciate that mostly they are just so uninterested. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, they've, they've been nothing but respectful. Yeah, they, they've just been like, I, 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 can, I can see the looks on some of their faces. Some of them are like, why are we even out here? Right. See, they're out here because they were told to be out here by the administration. Exactly. And for once, I really wish that black people in law enforcement would stop listening to the people who order them around against their own people. For once, I just really wish black people in uniform would say, you know what, we have no need to be out there with those kids. Leave them alone. If, if we must watch them, can we do it from a block away? Yeah, yeah. preferably in air conditioning. <laughs> let's, let's go down here and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah I think that they're starting to march somewhere else. Oh, just to let the audience know, we'll be starting to uh, film my documentary soon. Yeah. So I'm trying to get in practice of. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's part of partially why we're we're following them around and moving the camera so we can kind of practice uh, this kind of mobile filming. So you guys are also our guinea pigs for um, our, our film experience. And and please come look at the professor who is out here with the students. Now he was inside the convocation, right? Um, and we know that because he has his robe. Right. He was, I'm sure, seated on the on the stage, and in a show of solidarity with these students, he came out there and marched with them. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that we expect to see from the people who who these kids' uh, tuition pays their salaries for. Right. But but it can't stop at that because that's kind of symbolic, right? You you, you sit there on the stage. In, in, in agreement with that man coming here to speak, and then you come out and you march with the students. But did you speak out when you found out he was being invited? Right, 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 right. Well, we don't know. We, we don't know, but, but we have to acknowledge those people who come out and do show solidarity with us when we are out in actions like this. We must acknowledge those people. Realize people don't know what the Mecca means. So the Mecca is short. Uh, it's what Howard University campus has been called for dec centuries, probably, as the Mecca for Black Excellence. Let's see if we can get that guy, the faculty member. Oh, yeah. yeah the is now in front of the administration
administration building with the students because they're going in to occupy the administration building. We're going to hang back a little bit because we do respect their space. But they have every intention of occupying the administration building. The administration building on the campus of Howard University was occupied uh, once before uh, during the Black Power Movement. And we're going to have to do some research on that when we get back. But this is not a new thing. Um, and yes, this, this, this is a beautiful, beautiful fight to see. Police. Okay, so the, the police are inside the building. <laughs> All right, we think something's going on here. And it looks like the they days. might be trying to arrest or detain, but they may be trying to detain some of the students. Again, the students pay the tuition to maintain these buildings. And it looks like a couple of the students are, are being detained in the building. In buildings, they pay tuition to maintain. Yeah, it seems to be. Um the students are saying that somebody's being hurt up front. Okay. Somebody's they're, trying they're to get trying in, to close as you see. So uh, we're, the, the yeah, we're going to we're going to take a, 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 a safe distance. So the campus police are trying to close the door. That's what the hubbub is about. They're trying to close the doors and trying to keep the students out of the building that their tuition goes to maintain. Alright, seems to be a lot of lot of stuff up here. I don't, you know, I don't want to be like a Don Lemon, but but there's definitely um there's definitely uh, some kind of um tussle with the police up front. tried to uh, remove them from a building their tuition pays to maintain. So now, see, this is what we do. This is what we always do. We know we have a right to be in this building. Right. So what do they do? They get in a single file line so they can be granted access 
to an audience with their president. This is what they were told by this the is, administration. This is what they were told by campus police to do. So this is what they did. single file line and maybe they'd be let in they did what they were told and they still wouldn't let them in so <laughs> so so much for just comply right so so much for just comply so much for doing what you're told to do and then maybe we'll get you'll get what you want clearly that doesn't work and we've known that doesn't work because we've been at this a little bit longer but these kids are finding this out i, I should stop calling them kids because they're young adults but they're learning this lesson now but we say kids affectionately yeah, we, we do, because yeah. they, they are the next generation right, of us. Right. We say it They're the ones who have to finish this work. Yeah, this is not a description of their maturity or their development or anything. Yeah. This is how it should look every single fucking day. That's right. When we're fighting for black liberation, when we're fighting for black liberation, whether at our university, or in the D.C. community, or wherever the fuck you're from, this is how it should look every day. We're tired of walking the line of the black bourgeoisie. Mm. We're tired of turning a blind eye to our brothers and sisters and our family who die in the streets every day. This is not a game. I have family who have died to white supremacy. I have family who have died to white supremacy. You have family. We all have family who have died to white supremacy. It's not a game. I love being black. I love being black. I said I love being black. I said I love being black. I love the color of my skin. I love the color of my skin. This is the skin that I'm in. This is the skin that I'm in. I said I love being black. 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 I love the texture of my hair. I love the texture of my hair. And I rock it everywhere. And I rock it everywhere. I said I love being black. White shirts uh, open up the room. Thank you. 
Play that game. Um, find the allies. Yeah, we're gonna play find the allies. the song that they're doing so the song was created by janelle monet um and it came out of a black lives matter protest and uh during the whole say her name hashtag campaign so janelle i think it was janelle monet who came up with this song where she just started saying the names of the people who had been murdered by police unarmed black men and women that's where this name came from. That's where this song came from. And, and it, seems, it seems to have been adopted as, and, I, and maybe that's what she intended to be, as sort of like this generation's um, protest anthem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's, uh, so a couple of these names uh, I'm not familiar with. So, I mean, that, that just should give you an idea of the breadth of the problem of extrajudicial killings of black and brown people. There really are so many names that none of us can keep track with how many there are. The list is too long. There you go. This guy in our club day joined himself. Forming people who have been murdered uh, in the district in the past, I think, year or two, uh, that the police have done very little to investigate their deaths. Now, for those who don't know what um, gender nonconforming is, transgender mm -hmm. women. Who is Catfish? Who is Catfish? Who is Catfish? Who is Catfish? I can't hear y'all. Who is Catfish? 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 All right. 
Okay, apparently they're not letting them in. So, rightfully, rightfully so, they're not going to play this game. Right. So they're going to the back of the administration building. Yeah. 
So y'all, we want to open this up because obviously they don't want to let us in. Um, it's open. If you want to share a poem or a word or just anything, put anything in the space, please do so before we all go. But this is not it. This is not it. I repeat, this is not it. Can we all say that? This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. We still have work to do. 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 We don't know, you know what type of reprisals, we don't know what there, type so, of reprisals yeah. there are. Um, supervisors, um, campus police supervisors in white shirts 
and and lots of hardware taking pictures mm -hmm. of of these activists out here so when we leave we don't know what's going to happen to them we don't know if they're going to if they're going to have marks you know derogatory marks put on their student records for exercising their first amendment rights we don't know if they're going to get some notice sent to their parents where they're going to get in trouble for exercising their first amendment rights so so we have to be careful um, with their identities um, if they don't want to participate in an interview um, it, this is a very delicate balance for many of these kids I'm still with you I see you Okay, so I think um, from what it just that I gathered mm -hmm. is that they're not going to let them in. So now they're wrapping this up and um, they're saying that they're going to make another attempt to um, to come see the administration. So they're just now winding it down. And, um, you know, and, and um, you're in contact with some of the students here. Yes, yes. I'm in contact with three of the students and I will reach out to them uh, as soon as we get home and we'll provide updates. Uh, and we'll check on them to make sure that they're okay. Um, because more important than, than the story is that these students are all right, that these young people are not going to be um, the subject of reprisals uh, because of their activism. Um, that kind of thing shouldn't exist on anybody's campus, but it sure as hell shouldn't exist on an HBCU. So. Uh, yeah, this is a this is an eye-opening experience for us to see how. Um, how and this how, and, and this is one of the reasons why people should support independent journalists. Exactly, you know, because we, the, the administration. We're the only ones here. I mean, like like all of the mainstream media, they're not here. Howard University media gone. Yeah. Uh, NBC four gone. Yeah. Fox five. I don't think they were ever here. They were ever here. We're the only ones here showing you that these kids came around to the back of an administration building that is open. Yep. It's it's Friday afternoon, the building is open. There are people in there working. Okay, that's so, right. Thanks for joining us, you all. Share this stream. Um, we'll put a we'll throw a title up on it in a minute, but uh, thanks for joining us, share it, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Peace.